Hello and welcome to another video on basic fiber optics. So today we are going to talk about um, loss in fibers and splicing of fibers. So first of all let's try to measure the loss inside of this particular short segment of fiber here. So to do that we first have to calibrate the power meter. So we're going to take the handheld laser and clean the end face here and plug it in to the power meter like so. Oh, let me just reset it real quick and see what we get. So there we go, so now it's zeroed out. So the total power coming in is negative 7.28 dBm and right now we're measuring zero decibels because I've, I've normalized it. Alright, so to measure the loss inside of this fiber segment we simply have to uh, disconnect this one and then plug the the fiber in. So let's do that. Oh, I think this one might be running out of tape, so just a moment, let me go and get another one. Alright, so I've got another fiber cleaner. Uh, usually you can actually see how much uh, cleaning tape is left if you look at this, uh, this little white indicator here. That's simply the, the tape spool where you can see how much is how much is left. So anyway, we're gonna clean this one and plug it into the test fiber like so. And of course, plug the other end into the power meter. Now, I don't expect there's going to be very much loss here. It's probably going to be only maybe 0 0.1 decibels or something, if I'm doing anything right. Alright, that seems about correct. That's what we have. We have negative 0 0.35 decibels. That's a tiny amount of power we're losing just in this fiber segment, which gets us expected. But sometimes when um, you have a fiber deployed out in the field for doing telecommunication or even remote sensing, which fiber optics is sometimes used for, it happens that you get a cut in the fiber. So this could happen because there's some uh, construction that accidentally digs across the, the fiber and just like, destroys it. Or it could be like an earthquake or some kind of disaster that ends up destroying the fiber. In any case, you can see now that we've cut the fiber into two pieces, we of course get no power over here. All the power gets lost and you know, good luck trying to just merge them together with your, with your hands here. Can I actually do that? Let's see. No, I didn't think so. We don't get any power though. Okay, so when you have an electrical wire that gets cut, then it's a simple matter of just uh, turning off the electricity and then using a soldering iron and some solder to actually merge the fiber or the sorry the wire back together. But what do we do when we have a fiber optic cut? Well, in order to merge this fiber back together, we're going to need a fiber optic splicer like this device right here. So I'm going to show you how to use it in a moment. Stay tuned. Before we can actually plug the fiber into the splicer and uh, merge it back together, we first have to do something very important, which is to add a, one of these things to the fiber. So essentially this is just a... Um, oh, let's see if we can get the... get into focus. Come on. There we go. So this is simply a um, metal rod, as you can see, that's surrounded by heat shrink plastic tubing. So the idea is that once we've spliced the fiber back together, then we can put it inside of a little... Uh, heating element and then the tube will shrink and the metal bar will simply provide some mechanical stability so we don't snap the very delicate merging that we've done. So anyway, always put this on first so you don't forget it later. Alright, anyway, so next step is to actually expose the glass fiber core. Right now this uh, yellow part here is simply just a plastic coating, so we're going to strip that off using something called a fiber optic stripper, which uh, sounds a lot more exciting than it actually is. So we simply bite into it like this, and then you slide off the yellow part here. And I was kind of careless, so I ended up actually snapping the fiber itself, but that doesn't matter so much, because we have lots of fiber remaining, so let's just do a delicate cut here, and grab it and gently slide it off, like so. So now, what you see here is not even the, um, the cladding of the fiber, this transparent part here is still just a plastic, plastic coating. So we're going to strip off a little bit more, and that should be good. And then we can also use the same tool here to Strip off the plastic coating, so we simply bite down and then we pull, like so. You can see it's starting to fray a little bit, so that's me stripping off this outer plastic layer. And now the thing we can see here is actually the, the glass cladding. So before we move on, we're going to use a little bit of isopropanol, as well as an optical cloth, to clean up the fiber, remove some of that plastic dust that's left. We're just going to wet an optical cloth like this and then grab around the fiber 
hold it tight and then just pull it. I'm not sure if you can hear it on the audio here, but it's gonna give a small like ringing sound when you do this. There we go. Okay, so at the moment we've um, stripped away all the plastic coating, but what we have right here at the end is actually kind of a, a very bad cut because it's just like a broken um, sharp piece of glass. So what we need is actually a perfectly flat cut so we can splice, splice the fiber properly. So to do that, we need one of these fiber optic cleavers here. Essentially, this consists of a bunch of holding mechanisms and then a sort of round circular blade. I'm not sure if you can entirely see it here on the camera. It's right there. The idea is we're going to fix the fiber in place and then slide this blade across it in order to, to cut the glass and get a hopefully completely flat end face. So I'm going to place the fiber down like so and close down this little holder right here. And sometimes you might need to rotate the fiber slightly, move it back and forth in order to make sure you get like a completely perfect 90 degree angle between the fiber and the blade. Once that's done, we're going to close this lid here, snap it into place, and then click here. And then you can see that the segment of fiber has been cut off. And now the remaining part here should have a perfectly flat end face. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other end of the fiber that we want to splice, and then I'll uh, show you how to install it inside of the fiber optic splicer. See you in a bit. All right, so now I've installed the uh, two cleaned and cut fibers inside of the splicer. Let's take just a closer look at how it's how it's designed. So what you see in here in the middle is two electrodes, and essentially what the splicer does is that it uses these two translation stages to move the two fiber ends very close to each other. And using the camera that we see up here, or rather the microscope, we get a picture from the side, from the top, and then the splicer can automatically align the two fibers to the perfectly in front of each other. Then these two electrodes here get activated and a high current gets passed through the little air gap here, creating a very hot plasma that's hot enough to melt the glass. And as this happens, the translation states are gonna move the fibers together and fuse them, like so. Then afterwards we're gonna slide the little uh, plastic cover I showed you earlier onto the splice and then heat it up in order to secure it. All right, so let's see what happens in action. Note, by the way, that I've also taken the liberty to plug the um, handheld laser as well as the power meter over here back in. So we should be able to see how much transmission we get afterwards. All right, let's see what in action. So we're gonna close the lid here and then observe the, the screen. We're gonna ask the fiber splicer to get to work. So it should automatically adjust the location of the two fibers in order to splice them. Let's go a little closer and zoom in. Looks like there's a little bit of damage to this point here, but that might actually be okay. I guess we'll have to see. Oh, that's not too good. You can see there's clearly a bit of damage right there. Looks like the splice wasn't completely perfect. Let's see how much loss we have over here, actually. Honestly, that's not too bad. 0 0.3 is something that's fairly close to what we got earlier. So it looks like this little piece of damage actually doesn't cause that much of a problem. Anyway, let us open the lid here so we can extract the now reunified fiber. So this should pop open by itself. Open it here, and here, and then very carefully I can lift it up and then take the plastic cover with the metal rod and slide that onto the splice. So, so now we're gonna oh, to move this a little bit. Usually it's best to make sure that you have a very long cover like this because then you can secure it firmly on the, the two yellow parts right here. So, so we're gonna close these here, close this, and then press a button to start this heating element inside. There we go, so it should be warming up right now. That should cause the heat shrink to, well, shrink and then get fused to the ends here so the splice itself is mechanically secure. Probably gonna take a while. Mm. So, typically, if, um, if someone working in fiber optic network maintenance, you would have essentially a very portable version of this, uh, this device if not this particular device, in order to go out and uh, do repairs. In order to even um, detect there's been a cut in the, um, in the fiber, of course, you can usually see that because the 
the data communication could be the stops if there's a cut. But typically some of these fibers have lengths of maybe you know, hundreds of kilometers, so how do you actually detect where a, um, a fault is located? And essentially what you can do is you can send a laser pulse into one end of the fiber and then simply wait until you get a very strong pulse reflected back. Because when there's a cut in the fiber, there's a very large change in refractive index between the core of the fiber and the air outside. And that causes a huge amount of, re of Fresnel reflection. So if you send in an intense pulse, then you wait and see how long it takes for the uh, signal to return. Then you can determine where was that really strong change in the refractive index that indicates that a, a cut is taking place. And that technique is referred to as OTDR, or optical time domain reflectometry. So that's how you would actually detect where one of these faults is located. Maybe I'll show you that in a, another video. So anyway, I think this one should be fused now and also cooled down, yes indeed. So you can see that this is perfectly stuck to the yellow part here and the yellow part here. And the splicing here should be safe. All right, so once this is done, I think I might also show you what happens if you have a really terrible splice. So stay tuned for that, just a bit. Okay, this time I've uh, cut the fibers without using the, uh, the cleaver here to clean the end faces and make them completely flat. As you can see, they're actually quite messy right here. So let's see what happens if I try and get the spicer to merge them now. So it's first gonna blitz the two ends, I think. Yeah, that's just in order to clean away any small impurities that might be left after we use the isopropanol. Now it's gonna try and put them both into focus, which it might actually struggle a bit with because the <laughs> end faces are so, uh, so crude and ugly. So it's not really sure how to actually get them into the correct position. Looks like it might struggle a bit with that. Yeah, it seems to be inside of an infinite loop here, so these might actually be slightly too ugly for them to, uh, for the spicer to merge. So maybe I'll try and cut them one more time, clean them up just a little bit, and then see what happens if you have a, a bad splice. So stay tuned for that, just a moment. Okay, then let's give it another try. Let's see if this is gonna work. Hmm. Seems to struggle a little bit to figure out what to do here. Since the image cannot be processed because it's so badly cleaved, I might actually be able to overwrite this. No, I'm not able to. Okay. Well, what I might do is actually probably cleave one of the ends and then have the other one be really bad in order to persuade the device into actually fusing them. So let me try that out. Okay, let's take a look again. I think they might actually be a bit too clean right now for us to get a bad splice, but I suppose we'll see what happens. Hmm. So it's complaining about a cut error right now, but I think we might actually be able to override that. Yes, we can ignore it. So let's see what happens if we do that. So we should probably get a pretty bad splice now. Huh, actually that's way better than the first one we did. That's kind of funny. So in case it wasn't clear, the first splice we did uh, was actually pretty unacceptably bad. So. If you see one like the, the first one we did, don't accept that, it's way too bad. But honestly, this is not, not too bad at all, and we only have 0.4 decibels of loss, so huh, it's better than expected. Oh well, it's actually, I'm gonna try one more time, because I really want to show you what happens if we have a, a terrible spice, how much it affects the, the loss of the fiber. So stay tuned. Alright, let's give it one more try. This is gonna work out. That doesn't really seem like it. It's complaining about the fiber to the right, so maybe I can actually quickly replace that. Okay, this time I gave the fiber to the right a clean cut, so maybe it's gonna work now. It might work, let's find out. Mm -hmm. So I should be able to overwrite this. Yes, ignore it. And let's see what happens. Oh yeah, that's a pretty bad splice. Okay, let's see what the transmission is in this case. So if we look at the power meter down here, let me just break it up. There we go. Let's see what it's showing now. Now it's showing negative 5.4 decibels, so it looks like there's 5 decibels of loss because of this really uh, ugly like this splice we ended up with here. So in any case, I hope that shows you how to handle um, cutting and re-splicing optical fibers. Stay tuned for the next video.